Well, good morning. It is Long Haul Tanker, straight razor shaving with Long Haul Tanker, and we have taken our traveling uh, shaving show onto the road again. We are in uh, Lake Havasu, Arizona this morning at the Love's Truck Stop, and um, uh, we left, let's see, today's Monday, so we left Friday afternoon, uh, drove three hours to Alma, Texas. Next day was Alma to Moriarty. I wrote about that day on uh, the Shaving Cadre, and I'll say more about the Shaving Cadre in a second. Uh, and then uh, Moriarty to uh, Lake Havasu, to De and then this morning we're gonna go from uh, here to uh, Hayward, California for my destination point in Hayward, which is right at the foot of the San Mateo Bridge on the uh, on the east side there at Hayward. And so I've got a place, to, guaranteed place to park there on site where I deliver tomorrow morning. And uh, so let's get started with the shave. That's the route. I'll talk more about what's going on in my life uh, as I proceed on with the, uh, the shave and getting ready. We're using the Genco Easy Aces this morning. It's a five eight square point-ish. <laughs> Uh, it's got uh, nice acrylic uh, uh, scales, uh, Genco Brad, uh, Bradford, uh, Pennsylvania, it says on the back side. And I'm guessing you can probably see that engraving fairly well, etching. And uh, for our brush this morning, reach down into the water, we're using the uh, uh, QED Select. QED Select Manterian Silver Tip Badger, 24 millimeter in red garnet. And uh, I love these brushes. You will never experience a brush that is as, uh, bristles are as silken soft uh, as these are. You just, you just won't do it. And you know, my Poisson uh, High Mountain Point 30 millimeter uh, is not near this soft. Uh, my Simpson Manturian Badger uh, uh, Chubby 3 is not near this soft. Uh, the Silver Badger, not near this soft. Although it's a little softer than the Manturian uh, uh, Simpson, uh, but not as soft as these. And the thing about it is there's still plenty of backbone uh, to support uh, splaying and uh, cushion. And so that's a good thing. And for our soap this morning, we're continuing on with the uh, Martin de Condre, the original. Uh, it's got a light lavender scent, delicious. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful smell. And uh, so let's get started. Let's get lathered up. Yep. Now I've had some other shaves. Um, for example, the night before I left, um, on Thursday night, I had a shave at home. Then I had the uh, uh, shave at Moriarty. So I've had two shaves off camera. And if I'm not mistaken, this is my first shave on camera uh, since I've departed on this load. And uh, They gave me three days to get here, which for, uh, for uh, 1,800 miles. And given the uh, layout of the, well, you know, some might say that I'm just complaining, but I think they should have added an, at least an additional uh, 12 hours, if not 24 hours, onto the routing. Uh, this has been, everything has to go right for this, uh, uh, delivery to be made on time. And things don't always go right and there's no time built, built into it. Okay. I did have a nice hot shower. And of course, <laughs> if you saw my posting at the, the Shaving Cadre, Parking at uh, 
um, Moriarty, um, I didn't get a, I didn't get a shower. We stopped at the uh, TA Travel Center in Moriarty. I was going to stop at Santa Rosa, the love truck stop at Santa Rosa, uh, but I just couldn't see leaving two hours on my on my drive clock, my DOT drive clock. And uh, I got to Moriarty, and I had uh, uh, I left uh, 15 minutes on my drive clock, and and because you know the circumstances were such that it just worked out that way, the mileage and time and distance and so forth, it just worked out. Uh, but that's kind of the way a day should go. You leave about 30 minutes to 15, 10 minutes even, 10 minutes cut it kind of close. But if you got a truck stop picked out and you can get to it in a lot of time, uh, you know, it's almost good practice, best practice to uh, uh, yeah, run it out. Get as far on down the road early in the trip instead of leaving yourself jammed up at the end of the at, at the end of your uh, routing. Like today's my I'll hit the uh, delivery point this evening. That's why I'm taking a late start this morning and shaving today is because I is that I want to get in there after uh, right at dusk seven, eight o'clock tonight. And so I, you know, calculated out how many hours I need to shower and shave, how many hours I need to drive. I got to do a 30 minute break in there. And I may have to stop and refuel. And so I calculate all that out. And that, uh, uh, that tells me approximately what time I've got to leave in the morning. And I was thinking about uh, stopping in route somewhere uh, to uh, do my shower and shave today. Get a little up further in California, maybe to Lair or uh, uh, the next one up uh, where the Loves is. Madeira, I think it is. All right, let's get started. But I, if I did that and went in and took a shower on the clock, I'd be on the clock. And I didn't want to do that. So I haven't started my clock yet this morning. <clears throat> and I can still calculate my hours. I just got to get started. I got to leave here no later than 12 noon Pacific time. So I have been reading in the evening in the truck, studying and getting prepared for uh, my hazmat endorsement is set to expire in August. And it's a 30 question test. You go down to your uh, uh, DMV office in Texas, it's DPS office.
And uh, chapter 9 in the Texas uh, CDL handbook is the chapter that deals with all of the hazmat stuff that you've got to know uh, for the test. And it's only, I say, I say only 20 pages, 10 pages printed front and back. And uh, it's not that it's not that difficult at all, if you know. And there's plenty of uh, sample tests, practice tests on the internet. Uh, and this will be the fourth time in. Uh, my life that I have actually taken that test. It, uh, it comes up for renewal every four years. I took it in 06, I took it again in 08, I took it again in uh, 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 12, and so I think something like that. 12, and then four years on that would be 16. Huh, maybe I've taken it more than that, I just don't remember. I can feel this blade just doing a fantastic little job here. And uh, I used this, what, about a month ago or so, six weeks ago on a video because uh, 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 Lukey, uh, uh, 3262, known as Matt, also known as Matt, his real name is Matt, I guess. And And then uh, Major Rich did uh, use an easy aces, and then uh, Major Rich did it with a did one of the shade video. And, uh, and it was right about that same time that I joined ranks and uh, did one with an easy aces, my easy aces uh, as well. So. Uh, so if you're watching me on YouTube this morning, I'd say thank you, or whenever you're watching me this morning's shave video, I say thank you. And go on over to uh, hit the like and subscribe, and then go on over to the Shaving Cadre, www.theshavingcadre.com, and uh, join in or read along, follow along, whatever you want to do. It's an enjoyable. Uh, forum to with a, bu a bunch of good gentlemen uh, you're not you're not going to get uh, yelled at <laughs> like you might in some other forums if you say the wrong thing about well I like to use gold dollars <laughs> I dare you no <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I got a lovely lavender scent coming up. And look how nice that is lathering.
So let me give a little shout out this morning to my usual crew, uh, Handle Barber Dave, uh, Major Rich Barber Dave, Bill M, Scuttle Soap, Lukey3262, and uh, The Cutthroat Journey. And so I hope you all are doing well this morning. I know the Cutthroat Journey and Bill M have new videos up. Uh, Handle Barber Dave had a new video up yesterday, Hot Father's Day Shave. And And so uh, I've been missing the shaves out of Lukey, 3262. Where you at, buddy? Um, enjoy watching your stuff. I have not gotten confirmation yet that I'm going to have a backhaul out of San Diego, so I'm not sure what my plans are after I get unloaded tomorrow. I got to call my dispatch manager later today after I get going and remind him that this, we normally a lot after you Uh, after you or after we arrive at our uh, destinations for delivery uh, we allow uh, two hours for the work to be performed to get the trailer unloaded now for whatever reason sometimes it's more or it's less particularly the more <laughs> we're more concerned about the more um, especially when you're trying to plan something afterward and uh, this particular plant that I'm going to uh, has a history and reputation for 
uh, taking four to six hours uh, to get a trailer unloaded. And so that means I'll be over there all, you know, most all day tomorrow getting unloaded. And the nice thing about there, uh, where I'm going, is that when they're ready for you, you go and check in. They say, go sit in the truck, we'll wait, we'll come out and get you when we're ready for you. Then you'll drop the trailer off and disconnect. And they'll come out with their yard truck and connect to the loaded trailer and take it back into the forbidden zone. And uh, they'll unload the trailer. And that's good. That's great. Happy to, yeah, you want it? You can have it. Good job. And that's one of the reasons why we all like going there is that, you know, bring us the trailer. You sit in your truck, have a nap and we'll have it out to you in the next four to six hours. Okay, fine. And we're still getting paid to take a nap. All right, that's a good deal. And um, because they take so long, and whether they take it 8 in the morning or 12 noon or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the downside is, is that when they bring you back the trailer, they, they will let you stay on site, but they prefer that you get going and exit the... exit the facility and uh, there's nowhere to go you've got uh, limited hours left on your clock you've got about maybe four or five hours left on your working clock your five your drive clock and uh, the uh, and by trust me when I say that no driver likes to leave hours on his clock if he's got time to drive. And so you got four, five, six hours left on your clock to drive. And you've driven those, let's just say you drove three of them and it's uh, two in the afternoon. Now it's five in the afternoon. And where are you gonna park? That's always the question when you're driving a truck is where are you gonna park at the end of the day? And the later you go in California, after, and I will say, in California, after three or four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, if you're not parked, you are not gonna find a place to park. A legitimate designated 
and remember I'm hazmat, I'm placarded, and so no, no place to park. So that's why I got to call my dispatch manager. Um, if I get the back call. Um, so I'm going to spend all day tomorrow on loading. I will spend the night on site property. I will drive to the washout in Los Angeles. Uh, on. Uh, Let's see, Tuesday, Wednesday, on Wednesday, all day Wednesday, drive down there, seven and a half hours down there. And that seven and a half hours is based upon road miles, not practical conditions when you get into uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> but it takes anywhere from seven and a half to nine hours to, to make that trip. So I'll leave uh, uh, on Wednesday. I'll get an early start and drive down to the uh, to the washout. I get in there about three in the afternoon, four if I get an early start, and uh, let them have uh, Wednesday, Thursday to wash me out. and then have the load time on Friday morning. And so I, I want to make sure that my guy follows my plan. So that's what I'm looking at. If I get loaded on Friday, if I get loaded on Friday, I'll get back to the yard on Monday or Tuesday morning. 
the next week. So that's the way these loads typically go to California, and that's all right. I'm just glad we have a dependable, reliable place out of San Diego to, uh, um, it's not 100%, but more often than not, uh, able to get a backhaul out of there to take us back to Houston. The load actually delivers in Dayton, Texas, uh, to the northeast side of Houston, about 40 miles. But for my purposes, it's just uh, get it loaded and bring it back to the yard, and drop the trailer on the yard, and then they assign a, uh, uh, one of our local drivers uh, to go and actually make the delivery. And that suits me just fine. I am going to do a head shave when I'm done with my face shave, and I'll do that off camera. And I, my head, you can see that growth right there. I've got about uh, four days. I haven't had an opportunity to, to shave my head the way that I would like. Well, at all, I haven't had an opportunity to shave my head at all, so. <laughs> I will say that the water here at this loves for both for the shower and the shade was uh, uh, sufficiently hot, quite hot, doing just fine with that. And it's been a good run so far. I've had a couple of annoyances, but <laughs> nothing new with that.
just uh, knocked over my shaving brush. And I got lather, it went everywhere. But I think I recovered it okay. Just lovely, just lovely. So, not a whole lot to uh, report on the home front. I was home for about 11 days before this load. Uh, oh, here's something that is terribly important. Uh, and that is, you know, I'm, I am economically very pessimistic uh, on what's, uh, what's happening and what's going to happen in relation to the stock market and the economy. Uh, my comments are not intended as financial advice, but as entertainment purposes only. But uh, read an article. Now we all know about the war in Russia and Ukraine whatever side you might be on in that. Don't, that's not particularly relevant, except to say that Russia has always been one of the primary suppliers of a certain fertilizer that is uh, the key ingredient in the production of what's known as diesel exhaust fluid, DEF fuel, as we commonly call it, DEF fuel. You go to a truck stop, you go to the fuel pumps, you'll see two pumps. You'll see a, a green one and a blue one. The blue one is the DEF fuel. 
anyway. Uh, of course, we got the, uh, well, I don't need to go into that, but just, just suffice it that I, in, in the article, it is purported that Russia's cut off all of that export to the United States. It's also reported that Union Pacific Railroad has exclusive rights for rail transport of the death fuel in the United States, exclusive. And uh, Flying J purchases all or a significant portion, like 70 to 80 percent of their death fuel from vendors who get their fuel, death fuel, from Union Pacific Railroad. Union Pacific Railroad has informed all of its vendors, and particularly Flying J, to reduce their death fuel consumption by 50%. 50%. Now, it's a very interesting article. Um, look up Deaf Fuel, Union Pacific Railroad, Flying J, those key terms, and you'll likely find it. And uh, do you know what a reduction? Now, all the truck stops sell Deaf Fuel. Where they all get them from, I don't know. The article was talking about Flying J in particular. If there's a 50% redu reduction in death fuel in the United States, that'll grind trucking to an absolute halt.
Okay. It's funny how, for me anyway, I get everything said I think I want to say, and then I got nothing left to say.
my camera is giving me the low battery signal. And so let me rinse this off. We're pretty well done. And uh, and then I will sign off. But I think we had a very good shave. The, uh, the Genco Easy Ace has performed just magnificently. Uh, it was honed on an Arkansas Edge. I think it was a black, but I'm not positive. It could have been a translucent. And uh, and I am going to do a head shave here this morning. Not on camera, however, but. Uh, Very good, usual spots. Okay, I think that's going to do it. Excellent shape. Excellent soap, excellent razor, excellent brush. We use the uh, Genco Easy Aces 5.8 square point. We use the uh, QED Manturian Silver Tip Badger 24 millimeter, just a lovely brush. Uh, we use the uh, we use the Martin de Condre, Martin de Condre original, just absolutely stellar. And then here we're going to, in a minute, we're going to use uh, the uh, Allen Block by Ozma. Uh, but we're going to do that off camera. I'm going to go ahead and conclude, save my battery. <laughs> and uh, thank you for watching me. Hit the like and subscribe button on uh, YouTube. Go over to theshavingcondre.com. And thank you for joining me, and I'll see you down the road. My next shave will probably be Wednesday at the L.A. Tank Rack, Wash Rack, L.A. Wash Rack. And uh, while they're washing out the trailer, I'll grab a shave in my next shower. I don't know when it's going to be. That's why I went this morning. Okay, so we'll see you down the road. Thanks. Bye.